To do the gradebook assignment, you want to click on Use This Template so that when you click on the template, it will ask you, do you want to make a new copy of this document? Well, of course. So click Yes, Make a Copy. You want to come up to the corner and click on the title, and you're going to change the title to be Spreadsheet Gradebook underscore 101 underscore what day of the week is your class. So if you are Tuesday, you'll put T for Tuesday, W for Wednesday, or R for Thursday underscore your last name underscore your first initial and so you'll notice I have this gradebook already set up as a template but we're going to want to do a few things to it the first is we're going to want to come up here to the corner and when you're in between the A and the 1 you'll notice I'm able to grab the freeze bar and pull it down so that when I scroll I have the first row frozen, but I actually want the first and the second row frozen, so make sure you pull it down one, two rows. And the reason for that is you'll notice that I have put here underneath the assignment titles points possible, so it's actually going to be part of my header. And then when I scroll to the right and left, I don't want the student's names to disappear. So I'm going to want to grab the freeze bar right up here in the corner, ne right next to the A. Notice it turns blue and I put my hand on it and I drag it over so that it maintains the student's name as I scroll through the sheet. All right. next what I want to do is I just want to make up 10 student names. I'm going to do last name comma first name. So Cougar comma Joe Smith, comma, Mary. You write your own, come up with 10 names, any 10 that you would like. And then we're going to go in ahead and fill in some fake data. So the first thing is we just have assignment number one. I have it worth 10 points, so just make it page 10, 1 through 20 all. Assignment number two might be a quiz. So for these assignment titles, you can actually name them anything that you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the columns so I can center them. So you want to remember that the centering icon is right there in the toolbar where I can choose to do that. So assignment number three is only worth five points. Maybe I'll call it a warm-up. Assignment number four is worth ten points, so maybe it's page twelve. 1 through 15. And then I want you to add a few more assignments. Uh, you can make them worth anything you want. So maybe I'll have another quiz and I'll make this one worth 20 points. And then a, another page 15, 1 through 15 odd. I'll make that one worth 10 points. And then I'll have a test and I'll make it worth 100 points. So you just want to add in your own assignments. Don't make them the same as mine. Choose your own. So now they have the assignments that I need to go in and start grading the students. So my first student, say, got a 9, and my second one got a 2. And I'm just going to randomly put in grades here since they're not real students. So if you just go ahead and go through and give everybody credit, or maybe no credit, the student didn't do the assignment, so I'm giving them a zero. And a four. So just go ahead, keep going through. And you'll want to fill out that whole entire grid for points. So now when I go here and I go to points possible, what I'm going to need is all the points possible for the uh, all the assignments. I'm going to put equals. Remember, all formulas have to start with an equal sign. So equals sum, I'm going to add 
SUM parenthesis, I want to add up all of my points possible. So I am highlighting, notice that I am highlighting all of these points possible. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way to the end. Even though I don't have assignments over here in column U, eventually I will. And so what I want is to have the assignments go ahead and be ready to be added into the gradebook. So my grades go from G2 all the way to U2 in parenthesis, and I push enter. I'm going to just go ahead and put in some random data. You do not need to do what I am doing. I'm just wanting to put some data in there. Okay, so now that I have data for every student and how they did on the different assignments, and now I know the points possible, total points possible, what I need to do is go ahead and go through and do points earned. So I'm going to need this one to be equals SUM. I want to add up all the points that Joe Cougar earned. So that's going to be over here in G3. And I'm going to highlight his column. I'm going to highlight it. And I'm actually going to keep going past the test all the way to the end at U so that the gradebook will, if I, once I add the next assignment in, it automatically will add that in. I don't want it to just add up to the test. I want to keep adding assignments as the year goes on. So I'm going to do that again. For Mary equals SUM, I'm going to highlight, come across all the way to the end. So it's going to be adding up all of Mary's points. So you notice right now Mary has 57 points because she got a 2 on this homework assignment, but what if she got a 10? So you'll now notice her grade is a 65 instead of a 57. So by writing a formula, their grade is going to be automatically updated. If I look at this guy's quiz, he has a 75. Then I notice, oh goodness, he actually um, got a 1 on that quiz, not a 15. It adjusted his grade back down to a 62. So let me give some people a little bit better grade on the test here, just so I don't have everybody failing the class. So we can do this. So I'm going to go, go ahead and actually I don't need to type the equals SUM for every student because remember I can fill down the pattern. So if I get right in the corner, I'm able to take my formula and pull down and it's going to automatically add up all of the points for each student. So when I click on a cell, here it says equals the sum from G7 to U7. So you'll notice it's going to grade all the way across and I do the one below it, it goes from G8 to U8. So the pattern goes down. This one should be from G9 to U9 when I pull down the corner. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to delete these. I'm going to click on this cell. You'll notice the formula is equals SUM, parenthesis, from G4 to U4. I push Enter. I click back on the cell, and then I get my cursor right in the corner and I hold down and I pull down to get all of the points in there. So now I know how many points each student has earned. But how do I figure out their overall percentage? So for the overall percentage it equals, so I always start with an equal sign and I'm going to click on how many points they earned. So the number of points earned by Joe Cougar is an E3. And then I'm going to divide that by points possible. So that is up here in F2 is the number of points possible. Now if I push enter right now, you'll notice that when I pull this down, I start getting an error. It says divided by zero. And the reason for that is, if I double click on it, I can see the formula. It says E7 divided by F6. F6, there's nothing here. I don't want to divide by F6. I actually want to divide by F2 because that's not going to move. So I actually have to use cell referencing. So I want E3 divided by whatever is in column F. So I put a dollar sign in front of column F. And row 2. So I put a dollar sign in front of row 2. So that is cell referencing, absolute cell referencing. And I push Enter. Now when I pull down, 
what you'll notice here in the first one, I have E3 divided by F2. And when I on the one below it, it says E4 divided by F2. And the one below that says E5 divided by F2. So when I drag down, it dragged down the pattern of which student I was looking at but it left the points possible still in F2. So that's what those dollar signs are going to do for me is lock it down. Now you'll also notice that the formatting on these percentages is pretty ugly. So I actually want to highlight all of those percentages and I want to come up to the toolbar where it has a percent sign. I'm going to click on that to make a percentage. Alright, so right there I have um, a grade for everyone. I've added in a few extra assignments. I've got added up the points possible. I used cell referencing to calculate everyone's percentage. And so then basically that I am done. If you'd like to do as a bonus a little bit extra, we can actually do a, um, a formula. It's called the if statement. So you don't have to do this, but if you would like to, I'm going to do equals if now I'm just going to type a real simple one to begin with. So I'm going to type on, click here on the 80%, which is cell D3. And I'm going to say if D3 is less than 0.7, so you've got to remember that even though it looks like 80%, um, it's still, percentages are still in decimal. So I'm going to say if it's less than 70%, so I write that it's 0.7. I'm going to put a comma. So if D3 is less than 0.7, I want to say fail. Now notice I'm putting that in quotation marks. That is super important. Anything that is text has to be in quotation marks. So comma fail, comma, quotation. Otherwise, if it's not fail, it would be pass. So end quotation, end parenthesis. So if D3 is less than 0.7, comma, pass. Otherwise, say fail. So I'm going to push enter. I'm going to click on that cell. I'm going to pull the formula down. I'm going to copy and paste the formula. So I notice here my first three students pass and the rest of my class fails. So maybe I need to let the students redo some assignments. So the student got an 8 and a 12. And on this test, they did not get a 44, but they got a 75. So when I come back here, I'll notice now they have a 73, and the formula changed their grade from fail automatically to pass. So my formula says if anyone has less than a 70%, they would fail. If they have more than a 70%, they would pass. Now if I want that to be a letter grade, it gets a lot more complicated. I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And I'm going to create what's called a nested if. So this equals if... Now I have to start at the bottom. So how do I know if a student has an F? They have an F if their grade, so I'm going to click on the grade, which is in D3, if their grade is less than 60%, so that's 0.6, if their grade is less than 60%, comma, if their grade is less than 60%, they have an F. Remember that has to be in quotation marks, comma. Now, the opposite of that is if it's not less than 60% than what I want it to do. I want to check to see if they have a D. So if they do not have an F, I'm going to say if the D3 is less than 0.7. So I'm doing a nested if, so if it's less than 0.6, give them an F. If it's not less than 0.6, if D3 is less than 0.7, comma, quotation, D, quotation, Give them a D, comma, so what if they don't have an F, and if they don't have a D, then I want to check if D3 is less than 0.8, comma, give them a C. So if their grade is less than 80%, they have a C, but what if it's not less than 80%, comma, if... D3 is less than 0.9, comma, what happens if their grade is less than 0.9? I give them a B. Now, once you're at the last thing, I've, got, I've actually gone through the whole list. 
If they, do they have an F? No. Do they have a D? No. Do they have a C? No. Do they have a B? No. So then all else, comma, I'm not going to put an if because I don't need to check if. If it's not any of the others, then it must be an A. That does need to be in quotations. And you'll notice I did one, two, three, four if statements. So I need one, two, three, four sets of parentheses at the end for this nested if statement. And I push enter, and it's going to tell me the letter grade. So I'm going to click on my formula and pull down, and it's automatically going to give the letter grade for each student. So let's go ahead and change this student's grade so maybe they have perfect scores on everything. 20, 10, and 100. Then you'll notice that the student has 100% and, of course, that they have an A. Should have fill in some names for this. We'll just pretend we have double names. So basically that's all you need to do for the gradebook is you're going to come up with 10 different names, last name, comma, first. You're going to write assignments and you're going to add in a few extra assignments that was not in the formula. You are going to assign points for those. You're going to put in fake data for all the students in the gradebook. So you're going to assign students grades. You're going to want to write a formula to sum or add up all the points possible. You're going to want to write a formula to sum or add up how many points each student earned. You're going to want to use absolute cell referencing with the dollar signs to determine what the student's percentage is. And I would highlight and hit the percent key to turn those into actual percentages. And optionally, if you want to, you can write an if statement or a nested if statement to determine if they pass or fail or if they have a particular letter grade in the class. So, good luck.